Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I will be doing a spoiler-free review of the Diviner series by Libba Bray. And so this is a paranormal historical fiction series that takes place in the 1920s and it follows a group of misfits known as Diviners. So these are people that can have some sort of power to them. One person can touch an object and read the history of the person it belonged to. One person can walk through dreams one person can like heal people so you can kind of see it spread out kind of in variety of people's powers. So they are living in the Roaring Twenties in New York City and everything is good and dandy until these mysterious murders start taking place. And there's something odd about these murders. They're very gruesome but there is something unnatural about these murders and it follows a a man known as the King of Crows and he is someone that connects the world of the dead to the world of the living and it kind of goes off from there but I fell in love with this series I want to say I read the first one back in like 2014 2015 and I fell in love with it it's a very interesting kind of twist with history and like aspects of history integrated into it so it is a very unique series and something that progressively got better over the course of the four books. So the way I'm going to do this review is I'm going to break it down into the pros and cons of this series. And so overall, I enjoyed all the books in this series. There are some, some, some more than others, but overall, it was definitely between like a four and five star series overall. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you see me looking down, I have my notes right here. But the first pro would have to be the atmosphere. This book is tremendous tremendously atmospheric whether it is the creep following you know the king of crows and it's just scary actually like the first book is actually when it's kind of you know describing you know the murders taking place it's actually really creepy I remember reading it at night and I was totally freaked out but the 1920s settings in New York really gives a vibrant you know atmosphere to the world and it also helps shape the characters as well and it was very interesting reading something from this perspective especially people that are younger as well it was very you get kind of you know younger perspectives of the 1920s and older perspectives and it was very interesting seeing the integration of both and this kind of ties into the next pro which it was very um there was a lot of diversity in this book, whether it was the character representation, LGBTQ representation, it kind of covers all the bases there. And I think that is important. Not only do we have, you know, you know, white characters, we have Jewish characters, we have uh, black characters, Chinese, uh, gay, like basically everything. So I felt like it was a very um, like inclusive, book and I think it really does that well and it, ha it handles some of the racial issues that um, are were prevalent in the 1920s but also tie into it as well. It doesn't shy away from the darker aspects of kind of like the Roaring Twenties whether it is the rise of the KKK, you know, systemic racism and it's very much alludes to the Kind of the political situation that is going on now um it's very interesting just i remember the i think the third book came out right around after the 2016 election and a lot of the um kind of dialogue and the eugenics movement and the racial issues and you know kind of government you know problems there are addressed in this book and it's very interesting seeing how even just like the parallels between you know the 1920s and now is very interesting and it's very relevant and I think she does it in a way that younger audiences can you know re like realize this and they can kind of see you know although we've made progress we still have a lot of progress that needs to kind of go forward so I think she handles these difficult topics like eugenics racism you know homophobia very well and she does so in a like very um, respectful and appropriate manner. Another good thing about this series is that it's super suspenseful and creepy. As I said like the first book really was <laughs> creepy and just reading in the dark and like just the imagery in this is really creepy and I feel like each book progressively 
got darker as the series moved on which I think I love series that do that where they kind of start out and as the characters get more um, kind of like kind of enthrust into this world they go deeper into this world we also get like darker you know themes and we kind of get to explore more of this world and it's like super creepy and suspenseful and I loved how interconnected everything was things that happened in the first book really much kind of tied into important things that happened in the fourth one and like kind of everything there was a lot of webs that interconnected little plot points here or there that you don't think are significant but they end up being significant down the road so I really liked seeing um kind of that and it kind of keeps you on your toes too and it's important like there is a big gap I think between the second and third book um so I forgot a lot so the first like 100 pages was like struggling but I was like okay that was significant that happened in the second one and it ties into this one so that's good it keeps you on your toes so moving on to the cons I would have to say the probably the my biggest complaint about this series is that I didn't really enjoy all the characters so there's a big ensemble cast of characters in this one and um, there are some that I just didn't really like leading, reading from their perspectives. I think for me my least favorite was um, so that it just kind of was a little bit hard especially like the second one focused on characters that weren't necessarily my favorite and um, yeah, it just made it hard to kind of read especially when that big chunk of the book is dedicated towards that so there are some characters that I enjoyed more than others some like one character in particular I found super annoying and arrogant and rude and um, yeah so that like was one thing but there's enough characters in here that I was like okay like I enjoy most of them it was just like a few handful that I just really annoyed me another thing too I think this was most prevalent in the second and fourth book was the pacing issues and I feel like the second book like I said it wasn't my favorite because of the characters that were kind of focused on but um, it also kind of was a lot slower and it had a lot of pacing issues some parts were really fast but for the majority of the book like not a lot happens and I had the same complaint for the um, fourth one as well basically there's I'm not gonna spoil anything but there's a part where like the characters are kind of separated um, that lasted like 200 pages and the separation I don't think was very um, necessary it just added kind of a little more drama to the series and it just I felt like it took away from the overall um, kind of storyline of the final book because basically for 200 pages the characters were just kind of like wandering around USA trying to get to their one location which I don't know wasn't my favorite part but it did struggle like it does like I said the second and fourth book is where it's most prevalent I think um, where it kind of goes from like you know really really intense at the end for the last like 150 pages but like for a grand total of like 200 span within the middle like not a lot happens so yeah and lastly some of the things especially with the ending I felt like it was a little bit too convenient but I'm just being a little bit nitpicky and like I feel like you know like sometimes like YA does tend to be a little bit convenient for the characters kind of solving problems or kind of gathering information um, just like here or there but for the most part it was other otherwise pretty good with this this, this is just me being very nitpicky <laughs> So overall, despite the cons that I had, there was only a few. Overall, I really enjoyed this series. It was very much different for me because I don't really read anything with paranormal twists in it. So it was very different for me, but I was pleasantly surprised. I think the combination of the historical setting with very unique, diverse characters that also tackled very relevant um, historical and you know current issues um, I actually really enjoyed this series and I think you guys will too so like overall this series is like a four to five depending on the book my favorite being the third book the third book is amazing 
but overall this series is really well done if you're looking for something a little bit different if you want some historical setting and want to also step outside your comfort zone with something that's paranormal I highly recommend you check this series out so that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this series review let me know in the comments below if you've read this series and what you thought about it or if you're interested in reading the series let me know um, but yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.